Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a short explanation as to the difference between tonicity and osmolality. So with that, let's give it a go. So in order to understand the difference between these two terms, we have to understand the difference between two different types of solutes. The first are permeant solutes. So these are solutes that can pass through and equilibrate across the cell membrane. The second are impermeant solutes. So these are solutes that cannot equilibrate across the cell membrane. So we're gonna talk about both of these solutes in more detail, but we're gonna start off with permeant solutes. So what we're gonna do throughout this video is explain more what this definition means, and we're also gonna see how these two solutes affect the cell. So with that, let's begin. So let's start off with an experiment. So in this experiment, we have a cell that is immersed in a solution. And let's just say this, the osmolality of the solution is equal to the osmolality of the cytosol in the cell. So both the cell and the solution have the same osmolality. So let's just say we start off by adding solute into the solution. And this solute that we're adding in is urea. So we add urea into the sol solution, which increases the solution's osmolality so much so that the osmolality of the cytosol is less than the osmolality of the solution. So the effect of this is that the osmotic pressure outside the cell is now greater than the osmotic pressure inside the cell. Therefore, the immediate effect of adding urea into the solution will be that water will be drawn out of the cell into the solution. And as a result of this, the immediate effect of adding urea into the solution would be that the cell would shrink. So what would be happen after that? So after a while, the urea would actually start to move across the cell membrane, and it does this through certain transporters. And as urea moves across the cell membrane, water comes along with it. So as a result of this, the cell starts to regain some of its volume back and it starts to swell back. And after a certain period of time, urea will equilibrate across the cell membrane. Therefore, the osmolality in both the cell and the solution is going to be the same. The cell volume expands back to the volume that it had at the initial condition, and the urea is now equilibrated across the plasma membrane. So after a certain period of time, after adding urea into the solution, the urea will equilibrate across the cell membrane, the cell volume will remain the same, and the osmolality will be the same on both sides of the cell. So it will be the same in the inside and the same on the outside. So that was the effect of permeant solutes. So what is the effect of impermeant solutes? So in order to understand the effect, we're going to use the same experiment. So we have a cell immersed in a solution, and the solution starts out with having the same osmolality as the cell. So let's just say we add solute, but this time the solute is sodium. Now after adding solute into the solution, what happens is, is that the osmolality of the solution becomes greater than the cytosol. Now inside the cell, we have sodium leak channels. And these sodium leak channels are always open and they allow sodium to move down their electrochemical gradient. So as a result of this, let's just say three sodiums move into the cell. Now, as you know, cells have the sodium potassium pump and the pump uses ATP in order to pump three sodiums out and two potassiums in. So what we see here in this cell is that all of the sodium that came into the cell is pumped back out through the pump. So as a result of this, sodium is said to be functionally impermeant to the cell membrane because even though sodium can pass through the cell membrane, all of the sodium that does pass through is eventually pumped back out by the sodium potassium pump. So it's functionally impermeant. So what is the result of this? So the result is the osmotic pressure outside the cell is greater than the osmotic pressure inside which means that water moves across the membrane into the solution. Therefore, the cell shrinks from this process. So another example of an impermeant solute would be glucose. So the reason why is because we, when we add glucose into the solution, 
what happens is, is that the osmolality of the solution becomes greater than the cytosol, and glucose can actually move across the cell membrane. And it can do so through transporters like SGLT2. But when glucose moves across the cell membrane, glucose is quickly metabolized by the cell. So the cell is unable to accumulate glucose inside of it. So as a result, you can look at glucose as a functionally impermeant molecule. So even though the molecule can pass through the cell membrane, the cell is unable to accumulate it because it metabolizes it so fast. So as a result of this, the osmotic pressure outside the cell is greater than the osmotic pressure inside the cell, and water will move from the inside of the cell to the outside, causing the cell to shrink. So what we see here are we have from these two different types of solutes is that we get two different types of terms. The first is osmolality, and the second is tonicity. So osmolality is simply the sum of all the concentrations of solutes. So it's basically all the concentrations of solutes added together. And we see this from right, this equation right here. So this equation is actually used to estimate the osmolality of our blood in our body. So what we see here are all three solutes, both permeable and impermeable in this equation. Tonicity only includes impermeant solutes, as we see right here. So what we see here is that, once again, osmolality gives us the total amount of solute per unit of solution, and tonicity gives us the effective osmolality, or the amount of impermeant solute per unit of solution. And it's tonicity that's going to determine water movement. So the general rules for osmolality are as follows. So the osmolality of the cell is 290 milliosmoles, and if the solution is less than 290, it's said to be hypoosmolal. If it's equal to 290, it is isoosmolal, and if it's greater than 290, it's hyperosmolal. So the general rules for tonicity are as follows. So if the tonicity of the solution is less than the cell, the solution is going to be hypotonic, and therefore water is going to move into the cell, and therefore the cell is going to swell. If the tonicity of the solution is equal to the cell, the solution is isotonic to the cell and water is in equilibrium and therefore the cell remains the same size. And if the tonicity of the solution is greater than the cell, the solution is hypertonic to the cell, therefore water will move out of the cell and the cell will shrink. So I hope this video helped you understand the difference between these two terms and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.